Hey everybody, we're going to be doing image transfers today and first make sure that if you are using anything with, with verbiage on it that whenever you take it and have it printed that it is reversed so that whenever you put the transfer on it'll be worded correctly. Make sure that it is laser and not inkjet. We're going to be using Swamp Mud. We're going to put it on the glass. Uh, then we're going to do one on the board with a colored transfer. This one is going to be using uh, French Royal as the base. Then I'm going to use the wax bar. And then our next coat is going to be the Starling. And then I'm going to do this one actually. And I'm going to try to do one just off of Inkjet. Off of one that I printed here at the house. I have made it work before although it didn't all stay. So... This is just a C and play. And this here came from uh, bydreamsfactory.com. By I'm not sure where these came from. This one came from Graphics Fairy, I believe. I'll have to research and find out, but I've had this one for a long time. So I'm not exactly sure. So if whoever has this, if you see it, please let me know and I will gladly give you credit. Okay, first I'm going to use the uh, brown swamp mud, and I am really getting low. I'm going to have to get me some more of this. I need to get this stuff by the gallon. I just love it. I use it on almost everything I do, and I'm going to put a coat of this on the um, glass, and I'm going to do that process, and then um, as soon as I get that done, we'll, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, as you can see, I've got it all painted. And uh, I done it around this way, even though I had the tape and I just could wipe it off that way. And then I came down with the linear and I stopped at the very bottom here because I didn't want to put any on the bottom. So we're going to let that dry and uh, do the next step. Okay, actually, instead of waiting to do the next step on the jar that we just put the brown swamp mud on, we're just going to move on to the next project. And uh, I'm going to base coat it again in the French Royal, let it dry, put the wax bar on, put on sterling, and then um, let that dry. We'll distress it, and then we'll do the image transfer. So as soon as I get th that process started, we'll be right back. And we're going to move on to this one. Um, I'm not going to put the swamp mud on it. I'm just going to paint it. And I'm not sure exactly what color I'm going to use first. I think I'm going to do the onyx. So I'm going to get that started and then we'll move on with that and I'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, I've gotten this one finished. And boy, as you can see, that was a trick because of it being slanted and having to hold it up. But we got it done. I'm not sure exactly what finish I'm going to put on this whenever I do the uh, transfer. So this may end up being in a video all its own. We'll see. Okay, the swamp mud's dry. And uh, I'm going to smooth it out just a little. And... Uh, a lot of time, I never even use sandpaper. I'll just use brown paper, like off of a brown paper bag or the brown craft paper. But I don't want to run out and get any, so I'm just going to use uh, typing paper. And I'm just going to rub real light, and it'll make it really smooth. So I've already done that, and uh, I'm going to put the next coat on, which is going to be Italian lace. So I'm going to get that started, and we'll be back. Okay, after I had started applying the um, Italian lace, I needed a paper towel to wipe my hands on, and I picked it up and I thought, oh, you know what, I'm going to try something. So I just started dabbing, I just wadded it up like this, and just started dabbing, and I think I'm really going to like that. So never mind about the non-distressed look, so I'm going to let that dry, and then uh, we'll go on and see what we're going to do next. Okay, we're ready for the next step. I'm going to use the uh, wax bar and put it on, and I'm just going to lightly drag it and skip it. I'm not going to push it over the whole thing. Kind of touch the edges here a little bit, and then I'm going to go in with the uh, sterling, and as soon as I get doing that, well, then we'll go to the next step. I hope you can see where that's at. It's kind of hard to see with the lighting and everything, 
but uh, I just love the wax bar. It is so easy to use, and I like the way that it forms to your hand and everything. So we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, on this one, I'm kind of doing something a little different. I didn't do 100% coverage because I am going to distress it. And I done it this way whenever I was putting it on. And then I've kind of come back and just lightly hit it like this and to leave brush marks. And I'm kind of going after a linen look, if you can see that. So I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to move on to the next step. I'll show you just a little just how easy this is using the wax bar. See how easy that comes off and it's really nice and smooth. I do like the uh, linen look that I got from uh, applying it one direction and then uh, going the other direction. I really like that. Okay, I'm going to finish sanding this and then we'll be back to uh, put the transfer on. Okay, I really like the finish on the jar. I may do some more like that. Turned out pretty neat. Uh, something I wanted to show y'all is <clears throat> on my transfers, most of the time I will tear them. I uh, hardly ever leave them square so they're sharp edges uh, whenever you take it off. That way whenever you... Uh, are pulling your image transfer and you're getting all the bubbles out you're less likely to have a line or if you do it'll look better with one like this so I just take it and I just tear it as I go and um, you know it's like if I'm going for a distressed look and I happen to tear some off well that's okay too because it doesn't have to be perfect um, so I'm going to get this done and then we'll move on to the next step Okay, this is one of those things that you do that you call uh, back to the drawing board. I had to discard my other one. I broke it, and so we're starting over, and I only had one of the grain uh, transfers, so we're going to do the sheet. And as you can see, uh, I've already got it torn, so I'm going to put the uh, image transfer on the jar. And it just goes to show you not everything always works out perfect, but that's how it goes. Uh, thing is, is don't have wet hands whenever you pick up your jar. I'm going to put some on the transfer as well. be quite enough. I might need just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this, get it in place. Okay, put it on there and then I'm going to rub it and get all of the air bubbles out and we're going to let it set for about 45 minutes and then we will be back and um, see how it turns out. Okay, on the um, board, um, I had to change transfers. If you notice anything about this, they did not do it in reverse. So that's okay. I had another one that I did, and this one will be just as pretty because it says follow your dreams. Um, and I really like how this turned out uh, using the wax bar. Really nice. But I'm going to apply the transfer cream to the paper and put it on the board and um, smooth it out and then um, we're gonna push all the air bubbles out okay I've got it on there so I'm just gonna take my sponge and then as you can see the cream that's coming out I'm just gonna wipe it off so that there's no residue left once I start taking the paper off so we're going to let this dry for about 45 minutes and then we'll come back and see uh, how it looks. Okay, we're going to dampen this a little bit and we're going to start rubbing and see how this is going to turn out. And I don't use a whole lot of water to start with. I use just a little and then I just kind of rub until I can see it coming through and then I'll go ahead and move to another spot. There has been times where I've taken a wet paper towel 
uh, just damp, not soaking, and lay on top of it as well. So just whatever method works for you. And then I would take it off and then I would just add water as I go. But I don't stay in one spot very long. I just kind of move on. And as you can see, it's beginning to show through. Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing this and um, we will be back in just a few minutes once um, I get all of this off. And something I wanted to show you here, I've gotten part of this off already and as you can see, I'm not really adding any more water. It's wet enough that I'm just barely running my fingers across it and it's still picking up paper and then I'll brush that off and I just kind of keep moving on up to the next spot but right here I'm not adding any more water because I feel like there's enough on there until it completely dries out and then I'll move over to another section and then I'll come back a little bit because my fingers will still be damp but it's just a working process and the more you do the more you will see what works for you. It's getting a little dry, so I am going to add a little more water. But I'm going to kind of move on over as well. So I just wanted to kind of show that to y'all as I work on it. Okay, I was going to show you, since I had already mentioned it, about the paper towel. I mean, it's not wringing wet, but I did leave a little bit of moisture in there. And then you just want to lay it on there, and you can kind of press it down and leave it for a few minutes. And then something else I was going to show you is while I was rubbing, you can see right here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's uh, where it had air bubbles, which that's fine. And I kind of noticed it, that it was kind of lifting up a little bit. So I left that spot and come on over to another spot. And something else, and see, you can kind of see that it dampened and you can see the whole image that way. And another thing is sometimes I don't always take all the paper off because if I'm going to put a glaze on it then the paper that's left will soak up more of the glaze and it gives it that more antique look. So that's just another idea to think about whenever you're removing the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of this off and then we will be back. See like this right here. I may leave that so that whenever I do put the glaze on that will be darker there. Okay, on this one, I'm going to use my green scouring pad, and I've already done a little bit right there to get some of the white off. I really don't want that on this one like I do on the jar, and I think I'm going to kind of distress it in a little bit more in areas, um, like this right here. I like that, and I'm going to take a little more off in here, like that right there. And really, you just want to play with it until you get it to your liking. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then whenever I'm done, well, then we'll go on to the next step. And here, I think I'm going to rub some of that off to make it look a little older. It's a little too new looking for me. So, all right, I'm going to finish this and then we'll move on. Okay, we're ready to start uh, rubbing the transfer. And I went ahead and dampened a paper towel, and I'm going to let it lay on there and soak up some of the water. And doing it this way, you kind of get an idea of where the transfer is and what it's going to look like. So, as you can see, like that. And I don't really leave a whole lot of water, just enough, and then I press it on there. Just about like that. And then you can see the transfer. And then I'll just kind of put a little bit of water and then I start rubbing. And a hint too, a lot of times I, I did there, but most times I do not start on the edge. I will start more to the inside and then work my way out to the edge, just like that. And I don't stay in one spot for very long. 
I just kind of keep moving around a little bit. That way you kind of gives it a little bit of time to rest and to dry out just in case you're using a little bit too much water. Okay, I'm just going to keep working this and then uh, we will come back and see how it's progressed. Okay, this is what we've got so far. I wanted to show you here where I got a little vigorous and I rubbed some of the paint off down to the glass, but that's fine. There's nothing that can't be salvageable. And here I rubbed a little bit too hard, but that's okay because I want to distress it as well. I don't want to leave it in perfection. And I'm going to let this rest and dry. And as you can see, some of that fuzz there, there's still paper on there. But that's okay because I'm going to uh, let it rest, like I said, and then come back. Okay, as you can see here, I've let it completely dry. And uh, where the white is... I'm probably going to dampen that and take just a little more off, but I think I'm going to leave the rest of it, and I may take a little off down here, but I like the way the rest of it is looking, so I'm going to do that, and then I'll be right back. And I wanted to show you that since I've let this totally dry, how much easier it's coming off. You can see where I've already taken this off, and I, I mean, I, my finger is just barely wet and then that's coming off all the way down and there's not anything left and you can kind of see right there doing the same thing. and I'm just barely dipping my finger in the water and then lightly rubbing and then it's taken you can feel it underneath your finger as you ro it rolls up underneath there but see I really like that all right y'all I'm gonna finish this and then we'll go to the next process Okay, we're ready for the glaze, and I'm going to use uh, a little bit of burnt umber and the truffle glaze of Miss Lillian's, and I've put some um, of the umber glaze in the plate and added a little bit of water, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in just a second. But first, I'm going to start with the truffle, and I'm just and I have a little bit of water in my brush so that it's not, you know. Um, so too strong because I wanted it to be a little bit lighter than what it really is. So I just put some water in my brush, not soaking, just kind of damp. And I'll make it darker in areas. Get it all in real well. And then I'm going to use a little sponge. Um, you can use uh, the, the scratcher sponges as well, but just on the reverse side. And then you can kind of take and push it like that, and it, and it will leave it to make it look dirty. And then you can come in and dab and take some off. Then see, so you can kind of work it on around. And you can kind of push it to where if you want to make it look like a dirty edge. And then in here, I want to take some of it off and kind of give it a molted look like that. And then see how that's going to push it down there around that. I wanted it to, but if you just kind of push it, then you can make it look really dirty. And then I'm going to come in here with this, the uh, burnt umber that is a little watered down and I may dab just a little bit of water and then I'm going to put it right here like this and then put a little bit of water here and let it start draining down. Okay, as you can see here, I started letting it kind of run down just a little bit and I did go get me a, a water bottle so that uh, it would run a little bit easier. So I'll just take and I'll put some up here on the top then I just take the water bottle and squirt just a little bit of water on it and let it start doing its natural run. Just kind of letting it do its own thing. And then see this will kind of move what already is there. And I'm really liking that, how that's looking. It's going to look very old. So that's how, and it's, if you want some taken off, just go in with your sponge and see, I really like how this is turned out. And it's just for your preference of however, and the more you do it and the more you work with it, 
you're going to find what you like. So that's it. I'm going to finish it, and then we'll take a look at it when it's all done and dry. Okay, we're going to stain the um, Follow Your Dream ones. On, it's on the wood, the colored uh, transfer, and uh, or not stain. We're going to use a glaze, and it's called Smoke. It's Miss Lillian's Smoke, and I really do like it. And um, we're going to just brush it on. We'll do the sides first. And I usually tape the back uh, if I'm doing a project like this. So if it's uh, the way I like it and I don't want to do anything else to it. And um, that way I don't, uh, it looks more professional that way. I really do like the smoke. It makes it look like a weathered wood. Get that in real good. And then I'm going to use a sponge or you can use a soft rag, a t-shirt or whatever. And I'm just going to drag it and pull it off until I get it to the way that I like it. Do the edges. Okay, I really like that. We'll let that dry and then we'll come back and take a look at it whenever it's dry. Okay, I almost forgot the most important part and that's the lid. So what I did is I took uh, Miss Lillian's Swamp Mud and mixed it in with Texture Magic. Texture Magic is a, um, a powder and you add it to your paint color and there's other videos on that as well. And as you... Um, if you just want to look it up on my YouTube channel or uh, my website, uh, you just want to take your chip brush, load it up really good like that, and you're just going to pounce it on. And I thought I'd go ahead and do it with the Swamp Mud, and then I'm going to come back with a lighter color on the top. But I wanted some texture to so it would look old. And you want the highs and the lows of pouncing it up and down, just like that. And we will let that dry, and then we'll come back. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. Um, it's dry now, so I'm just going to sand it a little bit, smooth it out. And I'm going to sand it to where I want some of that to show the lid which is fine okay let me get that all the dust out now I'm going to do some uh, truffle glaze on here not going to do 100% coverage then I'll just use a paper towel to block that off okay now I'm going to attach the knob. Isn't the knob gorgeous? I'll put a link uh, for y'all to purchase those. Okay, isn't that pretty? I know it's a new knob for an old rusty uh, look, but that's okay. You can do that. Okay, and we are done. Thank y'all, and I hope y'all enjoyed, and there's more to come later. Kathy Stotzberry from um, Reimagined Furniture and More. We're going to line up some for you, and I hope you're going to enjoy them, and we will see y'all soon.